So, however we've arrived at a chart on screen, at some point you're either going to want to print it out onto paper, or you're going to want to create a PDF, either for selling or using yourself, use with um, Pattern Keeper, which is a popular Android program for marking up. And to do that, we go to the file menu where we have a number of different export options. Now, because making a PDF work with Pattern Keeper is an arcane art, we added a one button option so that people don't have to look up all the things the Pattern Keeper needs to make it work. We just do all the settings for you and then set them back again to the way you had them afterwards. So this one button will generate a PDF that Pattern Keeper will like. A Pattern Keeper chart is typically about 70 symbols wide on a sheet of A4. It has a grid. It has to have TTF symbols. That's true type font. And the key has to have number above the number column. It has to have name above the name column and a clearly readable symbol on the left. With all those things in place, Pattern Keeper will be able to read that PDF and allow you to mark it up on your device instead of using paper. It's a, <clears throat> now it's a fairly simple PDF, but it doesn't need to be more complicated for Pattern Keeper. However, let's make it complicated. So the export to PDF with full key is where we have the choice of setting all sorts of different attributes for a PDF that we want to create. For example, regardless of what printer you're using, you can tell the PDF you are this size. And for people who have large format printers, for example, they might want to generate a PDF that should be printed as A0, which is huge. Not quite as big as Super A3, but the choices are there. Normally I'll leave that as A4. That's an almost international standard unless you live in America, in which case letter is your format of the choice. Around the outside, you can apply margins, left, right, top and bottom, to keep the things away from the edges if you're, for instance, planning to use an inkjet printer that can't quite reach the edges. You saw on the Pattern Keeper PDF that we had a maximum of 70 symbols from one side to the other. You can choose how many you want here. 60, for example, being smaller than 70, gives you bigger symbols. Um, 100 gives you tinier symbols, fits more on a page. It's entirely up to you. For a small chart, for example, you can click the entire chart button and it'll stick the whole thing on one sheet. There is an overlap section here, so that if you want one sheet to show parts of the sheet previously, you can put a number of symbols overlap and choose the color, and that will add a band of, say, blue over the first five symbols of the second sheet and the third sheet and so on, showing you where they overlap and which bits not to repeat. On the style page, you can choose what type of output you want. Symbols on color is popular. Black symbols is popular. But you can tick or untick as many different output styles as you like. And when you do that, what you'll get is a complete set of pages for each style that you choose. You can affect the thickness and the color of the lines. The thin lines can be dashed or solid or solid every five. We can put center lines in, row and column numbers, make them 
move one or two to the left if you think that the center isn't quite where you want it to be. Have it numbered from the bottom to the top instead of from the top to the bottom if you're dealing with knitters. Titles, subtitles, copyright. page numbers, and so on. Although we didn't get one in the Pattern Keeper thing, we can add a preview page, which is literally just a colour version of the chart, so that people can see what they're planning to stitch. And a page map that shows them a little thumbnail view of each page with a number on it to show them how to assemble pieces of paper if they print them out side by side. Amongst the previews we have framed view and that in itself lets us draw up a frame around it to see what it looks like framed and stitched. Um, let's choose something slightly nicer. So we have a choice of frame style, we have a choice of inner border, two colours to play with. You can add a logo if you wanted to say this is designed by myself. Um, in fact, you can use two logos. You can put the frame against a textured background. And you can even put all of that into a room. Like that. And then having assembled our frame view, click use, and the program will use that as the first page of our PDF output. You can also add a pre-designed cover page where you have all your copyright information and your sales contact details and so on. Or a footer page, which is the same thing, but it appears at the end of the document. We can have a thread sorter page, which prints a key to the colors separated by half an inch so that you can print those on sticky labels and maybe put them onto cards or onto tubes. The key can contain many different options. So, for example, we do have the number. You can change the widths of these things. Show the number of strands. We can show the calculated length, the number of stitches. If you wish, you can have it calculated as a number of skeins. You can have a separate table just for the skeins. Separate table for the backstitch key if you want one. If you're providing a chart which is 14 count and you want to tell people, by the way, if you stitched it on 18 count, it will be this big. And if you stitched it on 20 count, it will be that big. Tick those options and they'll appear at the end. You can add a watermark to it if you wish. It's not a lot of use. That's probably all we need to look at there. I'm just going to hit the button and create a PDF. So there's our frame view on the first page. Two parts of the chart. The overlap shows on the left hand side here. Here's our key with two different size options more detail than the pattern keeper key and this is the skeins table showing us how many skeins of each we'd need <laughs> 